Hello, pre calc honor students. Here we are starting Chapter 7, a review of what you did in trigonometry and Algebra 2 honors, but also some added stuff uh, in 7.2. In first 7.1, measurement of angles, just uh, looking again at how we measure angles in either degrees or radians, and define what's meant by coterminal angles. Here's a geometric definition of angle from last year, the union of two rays with a common endpoint called the vertex. And we have the initial ray and the terminal ray, and we tend to draw it like this with an angle marked as a sort of directed rotation. So that's the measurement of that angle, is that angle between those two rays. As we can see, as we get put these into the coordinate system, we're going to see that direction makes a difference. Now, you can measure in revolutions, like one complete uh, trip around the circle is one revolution. Let's put a circle out there. And if we go once around the circle, that's one revolution. It's also equal to 360 degrees. Equals one revolution. Based on an old Babylonian system of 60. And the theory was that uh, they would take and fit six equal angular triangles in a circle and put 60 degrees at each corner and that's how they came up with 360. 60 minutes equals one degree. 60 seconds equals one minute and that's our symbol for minutes. Little prime symbol. And you can also do uh, seconds as um, double dots. Double, double prime there. 60 seconds equals one minute. Radians, though, I've made this the biggest because this is the measurement you really have to learn as you go into calculus. And it's basically on this perfect idea that's true throughout the universe, that this is not based on some arbitrary ancient civilization on, you know, with a base of 60. It's based on the idea that let's let the measure of the angle equal the arc length S, that's this length along the arc, divided by the radius. Theta in radians is S divided by R, or S equals R times theta. And that's why it's called radians, because it's the number of radii in an arc length. So all the way around the circle is 2 pi radiuses, so it's 2 pi radians. And so all the way around, if we go all the way around the circle, that's circumference equals 2 pi radiuses. So the angle for that is going to be the circumference 2 pi r divided by the radius and so we get theta equals 2 pi. So this conversion factor comes from that 2 pi is one complete rotation is equal to 360 degrees and we reduce that down to pi radians equals 180 degrees. So our conversion factor is power of 180 or 180 over pi depending on which way you want to go. You see that one radian is a much bigger unit than a degree. I think you're all used to a degree as being a 360th of a complete rotation. But now one radian is more like what I've drawn here, about 57.3 degrees. So let's practice doing conversion. Convert 196 to radians to the nearest, convert 196 degrees to radians to the nearest 10. So you have 196 degrees, and you multiply it by pi over 180 degrees, and the units of degrees will cancel. And then when you reduce it, you get 3.42 radians. Now, this unit here, radians, we usually don't state it because it's unitless. When you take radians as arc length divided by area, both these are in lengths, and those units of length cancel out. Now, convert 1.35 radians to degrees to the nearest tenth and to degrees, minutes, and seconds to the nearest second. So... Normally, this is just fine if you just multiply, take your 1.35, multiply by 180 degrees over pi, and you would get your approximate answer of 77.3 degrees. For those of you interested in going into geography and a lot of the coordinate systems and maps and so forth, might be interested in how these fractional degrees are turned into minutes by multiplying by 60, and then fractional minutes are turned into seconds by multiplying by 60 again. And so it's 77 degrees, 20 minutes, 57 seconds. Now, standard position for an angle in the coordinate plane. Here's our coordinate plane, and when we put in an angle, we put the initial side, the initial side, along the positive x-axis. 
and then we could put what we call the terminal side because that's where the angle ends the terminal side out into one of the quadrants and so this represents the angle theta and if we go clockwise that's considered a negative angle and counterclockwise from the x-axis is a positive angle. So this amount of rotation here could be looked at as, let's say, about 110 degrees. We could also get there by going clockwise from the positive x-axis this way, in which case we could get there by doing uh, negative 250 degrees, 360 degrees removed from 110 degrees. Later I'll show you that these are called coterminal angles. In fact, that comes up right now. Coterminal angles are angles whose terminal sides coincide. So even these, these are different amounts of rotation and different directions of rotation because their terminal sides end up in the same spot. They're called coterminal. Get it? Coterminal. Now you can find coterminal angles by and subtracting multiples of a complete revolution. That is 360 degrees or 720, any multiple of 360, 3,600,000 degrees. You could have 2 pi or 4 pi or negative 18 pi or 10,000 pi would be a multiple of 2 pi. Those, if you add them onto an angle, would give you a coterminal angle. Different amounts of rotation, different directions of rotation, but you end up in the same spot. And for our work with um, trig functions, we're going to find that coterminal angles give the same trig result. Now, just to so everybody's up on our position for all the quadrants, and what we call them all. This is quadrant 1, where x's and y's are positive. Here's quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant 4. We name them in this counterclockwise direction, which we consider the positive direction, starting from the positive, positive quadrant. Okay, now quadrantal angles are those between those quadrants. Quadrantal angles are all multiple of 90 or pi over 2. So that would be 0, 90, 180, 270, 360, etc. Um, in radians, 0 pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. Those are the angles between the quadrants. Now I called up this one. Oh, first of all, find two angles, one positive and one negative that are coterminal with the angle pi over 4 and sketch all three angles. Well, first let's start with our first angle, pi over 4 is like this basically 45 degrees. That's pi over 4. That's a pi over 4 amount of rotation. So, let's find an angle coterminal with that. We can do that by taking pi over 4 and adding on 2 pi. So we get pi over 4 plus 8 pi over 4, which is 9 pi over 4. 9 pi over 4 would be all the way around once around the circle, and then ending up here. So, it's not that pi over 4 and 9 pi over 4 are equal. They are coterminal. They end up in the same spot. And now, how about a negative angle? We can get that by doing pi over 4 minus 2 pi. So, pi over 4 minus 8 pi over 4. And we get negative 7 pi over 4. So that's, if we go clockwise from here and go around this way, we'll end up at, again, a coterminal angle, negative 7 pi over 4. Three different real numbers, three different amounts of rotation, but they're considered coterminal because you end up in the same spot. Okay, uh, you can find this nice diagram in uh, my wiki space under uh, common common things and handy charts and so forth. And it's a good idea to go along this and put in some of these things and start understanding all these special angles. And notice some of the patterns going on here too. Notice how the pi over 6 is in radians. Pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6. All have a similar amount of rotation off of this. When you do it in degrees, you get 30 degrees, 150 degrees, 210 degrees, 
and 330 degrees. Not as easy to recognize as just seeing the 6 underneath the fraction in the radians. Try this with the uh, pi over 3s and the over 2s and also the over 4s like we did over here. Now, 7, 2, sectors of circles. It's a little trickier. It involves a few formulas involving finding areas. And also we're going to talk about apparent size. The sector of a circle is bounded by a central angle and an arc of the circle. Here's the central angle, this union of these two rays, and here's the arc. And the sector is this area inside there. So for the area formulas for this, well, we use a central angle so you can just take a proportion of the whole circle. So if you're in degrees, you have to figure out what fraction of the whole circle you've got by taking this ratio of theta over 360. If theta is in degrees, you take that fraction over 360, multiply it by, in this case, the circumference, if you want to find the arc length S. There's the arc length S. And K is something we use to determine the area. K equals the area of the sector. So again, we take a ratio, theta over 360, to figure out what fraction of the whole circle, which has an area of pi r squared, we're going to take. Now, in radians, these formulas all work out nicer because you do the same ratio over 2 pi now, and the 2 pi cancel out there, you get s equals r theta. That's the formula we had before. And for the area, theta over 2 pi times pi r squared. So the pi's cancel out, and you get 1 half r squared theta. And you can do a little manipulation. You replace an r theta with s, since r theta equals s, and you get 1 half r s. So there's some nice variance there. And here's a review of the radian formulas. S equals r theta to find the arc length. Area is 1 half r squared theta. Or you can use area equals, I don't know why two equal signs got there. Area equals 1 half rs. Now this last formula looks a lot like the area formula for a triangle. 1 half base times height. Uh, let's compare with GeoGebra. I happen to have a GeoGebra file just for this purpose. Oopsie, no, that was not it. GeoGebra right here. And what I've done with this is taken this point here, and that's various sectors of the circle here with different angle, uh, central angles. But also what I did is I want to look at a triangle that has the radius here as its base and the arc length as its height. So that's why you can see the orange arc length here, the orange arc length given by G, 4.21 is the same thing as this height m over here. And I can also move along this so you can see that all these triangles that use the radius as a base and the arc length as a height will have the same area. Notice the area of the triangle here, uh, polygon six, the brown polygon 6.91 equals the area of the sector 6.91. Those match. Okay. All right, back to the big diagram again, and I put the example of that on there. So that's just saying, in a nutshell here, area equals one-half rs. Here's the r, here's the s. Now, I could also look at it as area equals one-half base times height if I let the base be r and the height be s. So it doesn't look like those be exactly the same, but they are. Okay. Now, example one, a sector of a circle has length 6 centimeters and area 75 centimeters squared. Find its radius and the measure of its central angle. Well, let's take a picture. Arc length of 6 and area of 75, so here's 6. And the area K here inside here is 75. And we know the arc length, but we don't know theta, and we don't know R. So there's a couple formulas we can use here. First of all, area equals 1 half r squared times theta, which would be fine. But look at the advantage of k equals 1 half rs. In this case, we can quickly come up with what r is, because k is 75. r we don't know, but we're given s is 6. So 75 equals 3r, r equals 25. So there you go. In other problems in your homework, you may have to set up two equations in two unknowns based on what's given here. But in this case, the judicious choice of a formula has really sped things up for us. Now, we're also supposed to find 
uh, the central angle. Well, the central angle equals arc length divided by radius. And now that we have the arc, we have the arc length, and we figured out the radius is 25. And so we get 0.24, exactly 0.24 radians. I believe that was our answer, yes. R equals 25 and theta equals 0.24. Now, lastly, I want to look at apparent size, and that's when, when there's nothing, when there, nothing is in our field of vision against which to judge the size of an object. We perceive the object to be smaller when it is farther away. For example, the sun is much larger than the moon, but we perceive the sun to be about the same size as the moon because the sun is so much farther from the earth. That makes sense. Thus, how big an object looks depends not only on its size, but also on the angle that it subtends at our eyes. The measure of this angle is called the object's apparent size. And so here, example two, Jupiter has an apparent size of 0 0.01 degrees when it is 8 times 10 eighth kilometers from the Earth. Find the approximate diameter of Jupiter. Well, what we can do with this is basically just use S equals R theta because we can make a circle uh, for Jupiter. There's Jupiter, and Earth is much smaller, much farther away. And we can draw some lines from Earth, a point. Just going to make a point, point. There's tiny Earth. And now let's put in some lines to represent this idea. And so we're going to get by with just looking at this arc length here. And remember our formulas S equals R theta? As we're going to see in a diagram, that's not the exact diameter, but with it being so far away, it's going to be just fine. So we call this R and we call this theta. And so we want to get S as an estimate, an approximate, approximate diameter of Jupiter. So S equals R times theta. We take the r, which is 8 times 10 to the 8th kilometers, and multiply by theta, but this has to be in radians. So we can take our 0 0.01 degrees, but we have to multiply it by our conversion factor of pi over 180 degrees. And we multiply that out, you get 140,000 kilometers. The units of degrees cancel, you end up in kilometers. Okay. That's it, and I just want to do a little bit more on, uh, I found something from Wikipedia here where it comes up specifically what they mean when you're doing this apparent size. It redirected me to this angular diameter, and it's this estimate of a diameter based on the angle that subtends your eye. And what exactly does that mean by subtending your eye? Well, when I looked at <clears throat> GeoGebra on this, here's the actual diameter of Jupiter, let's say, and here's the Earth. Now, when I just do the tangent lines here, because that's what your eye is going to see, this edge, not, not the actual tip-top north pole of Jupiter, but that will be obscured somewhat because of the angle you're making. So what I did is I looked at both this arc length, which is what we just calculated, but also this measurement here, which is just this vertical distance. And that's a little bit about along the lines of what's meant by this angular diameter and the formulas that Wikipedia is giving us. But as you can see, focus on the apparent diameter here in purple, the arc length in red, and the diameter in blue. And as I move around, as I move Earth closer to Jupiter like this, you can see there's a big difference between all those numbers. But as I move Earth farther away, and uh, let's move our screen over a bit here so we can do a little more looking. Yeah, let's pull A over here, bring B with it. Maybe make B smaller, see what's going on. Those three numbers are getting closer and closer and closer, basically being the same thing. Yeah, very close. There, now they're accurate. They're the same to the four decimal places. And you can see that's still not an appropriate angle. The angle is still much less than we talked about. I mean, this, the angle I have is still much bigger than the 0.1 degrees. In fact, let's measure where we're at here with angles. Measure the angle of E, Earth, F, and there's our angle measure. It's 320, unfortunately. They, I can go in the other direction. Let's measure the angle again of F, E, 
there like that. Let's turn out this other angle. Let's take a look at this. Just grab it, pull it out a bit here. Is it? See it? <clears throat> That's the. There you go. <clears throat> 39 degrees. And as you can see, as I pull this down, I make it much more realistic. And at that point where we had all of them agreeing to four decimal places, we're still at one degree. Let's see if I can get it down to 0 0.1 degree, as we said in our problem there. Oh, it's, it's getting tricky. Yeah. Okay. So, at close distances, these formulas are all very different. But as we get far away, they basically round off to the same answer. All right. Flange out.